We're speaking today with Dr. Andrew Davies, the head of the Defence and Strategy Program at ASPIN. The French company, DCNS, has been announced as the Future Submarines Project International Design Partner, and it feels like the wheels are starting to turn on Australia's biggest ever defence project. Why is it so important that the ADF have submarines? Aren't they primary and offensive weapon? Yes, submarines are very much a weapon of war. If we didn't think that there was a chance of armed conflict in the future, we wouldn't be buying submarines. Uh, other naval platforms like surface vessels also have a constabulary role and a role of presence. They're, they're out there in the ocean, they're sort of marking Australia's sovereignty and Australia's ability to project, project itself across the oceans. Submarines, on the other hand, are there in case we need to fight a war. During peacetime, they're out collecting intelligence and surveying the environment they'll operate in. During wartime, they're out there making life difficult for an adversary. If we eventually build 12 subs, how many are likely to be deployable at once? What does Collins or Oberon teach us about readiness? Submarines come in threes. For every three submarines you've got, one of them should be operationally available, another one should be in training or working up for operations, and another one will be in maintenance. So if you have 12 submarines, it actually means you have four operationally available submarines as a rule of thumb. And four submarines is a useful number. We're, we're actually moving for the first time in Australia's history to having an operationally usable submarine fleet. In the past, we've always had ones or twos deployable at a distance. Now we'll be able to have four. How much regional superiority are we buying? This is a decade of superiority, more or less? Well, once the first new submarine is delivered, it's not going to be a matter of just building 12 more exactly the same. If we do that by the time we deliver the 12th, which could be as much as 25 years after the first one, it's going to run into problems competing with other submarines it encounters. So this is going to be a process of continual improvement as well. It's much more likely that we'll build submarines in groups of three or four called flights. And what we'll do is that we'll be working on what improvements to make in the next flight as we're building the current one. So the 12th submarine will certainly not be the same configuration as the first one. It might look outwardly similar, but the systems will be significantly different. How much benefit will Australian industry and employment see over the next five to ten years? Well, in the next five years, what we're going to see is a lot of white-collar work. A lot of the focus in the discussion about these shipbuilding and submarine building projects is about shipyard jobs. And they're certainly the high visibility jobs, the ones that come with the photo opportunities with the hard hats and the fluoro vests. But there's a lot of white collar work that has to go on before that. A rough figure is that for a detailed design of a submarine, it's going to take something like a million engineering hours of work. So there's going to be an awful lot of behind the scenes work in the next few years. Now a lot of that will be done in France. That's why we're hiring an experienced design company like DCNS, because they know how to do those things. But as the process goes from design to production engineering and working out how we're going to do it in the yards here, there'll be a lot of office work being done in Australia as well. When that's all sorted out, that's when we start seeing shipyard jobs. How much actual building are we going to be doing? How much advanced building are we going to be undertaking? Well, we'll certainly be um, doing all the structural work here. Um, and a lot of the systems supplied to the submarines, things like plumbing, electrical work, all those sorts of things will be built in by local contractors. For some of the systems, we'll certainly be building in things that are imported, but that's the case with any major system these days. The air warfare destroyers that we're building, for example, have an American combat system and radar, and they'll have weapons sourced from overseas as well. So that's par for the course. The submarines will be the same. The combat system and the weapons will come from elsewhere, as will various comm systems. But all the integration of them into a working system of systems within the submarine will be done here. Will these new boats need new logistic arrangements to support them? Well, I hope that we don't repeat one of the big problems we made with the Collins submarines. The, the Collins submarines, we ran into technical issues with the development project, and that will happen again. Um, and they were all sorted out with the Collins, and that will happen again. What we did after we delivered Collins, we finally had a submarine that was working past all its operational trials, was commissioned into service. We then mucked up the support arrangements for them. Uh, it, to, to be frank, it was a bit of a shambles. 
the, the combination of the Navy, the Department of Finance as the owner of ASC, and ASC as the contractor, uh, just dropped the ball on that one. And we ended up at one stage where we had no submarines available at all. We can't let that happen again. It was a scandalous waste of taxpayers' resources. And I think hard lessons have been learned. And the Coles review into the Collins maintenance showed us the right way to approach it. And hopefully we're designing that in from day one. What's DCNS's track record for delivering products like these? What precedent is there? Well, DCNS have worked with other countries around the world to deliver submarine projects. Probably the best precedent for the one that we're embarking on is the project that they've entered into with Brazil. And with Brazil, they chose what's called a hybrid method. The first of the class of submarines was built in France, and the rest of them will be built in Brazil. Um, with this project, they're doing it all here, but it's not the first time that DCNS has worked with foreign shipbuilders, and I think that their experience should be adequate for the task. Thank you very much for speaking with us, Andrew. Thank you.